Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode four of the Exordia Creative Podcast. I'm your co-host, Quentin Solomon. I'm Jared Lund. And today, we're here with Morena McDonald, owner of 519 Events and Promotions. How's it going, yeah. Morena? It's going great. How about you guys? Great. Awesome. Good, good, good. You have an awesome radio voice. Thank you. Yes, it might have to do with my experience, maybe, yeah, no my background doubt. in radio. But no doubt. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we want to bring Morena on today to learn a little bit about event planning um, and her small business and stuff like that. Uh, we actually got to know Morena through uh, an event we did with economic development like a couple years ago. Yeah, we go way back. Mm-hmm. We go way back. Anyway, yeah. and that, that, was a, that was a fun time. We were actually, before the podcast, we were actually just talking about how we felt you were a little more established than us back then. Oh, with, yeah. Because you had, you had <laughs> signage and stuff like that, and we came mm-hmm. in. We, we were in that room prepping for like yeah. two or three hours that day. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know came that. came in with a PowerPoint, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. we came in with a PowerPoint, and we were, uh, yeah. It you was had, a, You had like a wood sign that said 519 Events and Promotions. We're like, that's so cool. Yeah. It was yeah. sweet, yeah. It yeah. was um, an uh, Etsy seminar. Yes. Like yeah, how to, how, brand to sell, yourself. how to sell on yeah. Etsy and yeah, all the stuff that goes along with that. And yeah. Are yeah. you still selling on Etsy? I am, yeah. Okay. So I do paper flowers. Um, oh, that's right. You were, yeah, you were there for the presentation. That's but, right. Yeah, so for weddings and like decor. So it's cool because being an event planner now, I can make my own decor if I need yeah. to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that seminar was great. Um, and it was awesome because you guys talked about social media, right? So mm-hmm. that's a huge... That's a separate topic. Etsy is one topic, social media is another. So it's yeah. great to have like that um, that partnership between mm-hmm. us. So. And I felt like it was complimentary too, because that's an avenue to sell through is through your social mm-hmm. media in order to get sales. Yeah, on Etsy. so that's a good yeah. point. Yeah, it was super fitting. It was yeah. super fitting. You will notice that we do have our HVAC system that just kicked on, so it yep. might pick up a little bit. We've done a little bit to dampen the sound, but we'll see. Anyway, okay. just want to let everybody yeah. know that. Yeah. So I do want to talk about the radio, but first, how did you get started with 519 Events and Promotions? So going back to Etsy, so uh, seven or eight years ago, Etsy approached me because I was a seller and I was part of um, a local group of Etsy sellers. And they asked me to um, consider hosting an event in Chatham. So um, if you don't know what Etsy is, it's an online platform for selling your handmade goods online to customers around the world. Um, So taking that online platform and bringing it in person locally. So rather than, you know, everyone shopping independently online, we would bring everyone together seller wise and then invite the public to come and shop in person. So that way you avoid like shipping fees and you get to like hold the product, test it out in person. So that was a long time ago. um, And I've been planning those consistently in downtown Chatham every September since then. Um, And then halfway through that, I got into radio. um, And then I started doing other events because people saw what I was doing with Etsy and they're like, hey, could you do another one? I was like, I don't really know if I could. (laughs) Um, You know, but it's, it's, through practice that you develop your skills. So, yeah. Yeah. and then it's just exploded since then. So two years ago, um, I created 509 events and promotions as a business and now I'm full time. So two years, That's awesome. almost full time the whole time That's doing awesome. events. So, so yeah. it was, it was the, the planning for the Etsy events that got you that, got you excited and that made you want to start a business around events and stuff? That's what, that's what drove it? Yeah. So for a while I was like, no, this is just a hobby. Like I really like the energy and it was just something I did for fun. Yeah. Um, and I got to hang out with my friends and family who helped me do them. So that was really great. Um, but over time, you know, people just asked, approach me, like, would you ever do more events? And, um, Speaking of like friends and family, my group of friends in Dresden, they saw the Etsy event. I was working on a few other things. They're like, why don't you do something in Dresden? Yeah. I was like, let's do it. Dresden Night Market was born. Amazing. Right? So, Big um, event. That's, yeah. yeah. And you so have two a year. Yeah, two. Yeah. Summer and Christmas are the two main ones. Yeah. So. so Etsy yeah. approached you. Yeah. So it's Etsy Canada. Okay. Um, and yeah, they approached me through um, the Teams forum kind of section that they have on there and so now it's being held um around canada uh 30 different cities every year have it and i'm friends with almost all of them in some way sweet. so awesome. we, we have a facebook group and and group chats that we talk to each other all the time we've been friends for a long time now and we just plan and cool. actually a lot of them are like me where they've started businesses yeah. um around event planning having never planned an event before so mm-hmm. etsy's where a lot of us got our start for sure so if, if they scouted you was it like a sales number thing like if you had no experience planning events, how did they mm-hmm. know to scout you? I can't say exactly what their sort of matrix was. Um, I don't, I, still to this day, I don't really know why yeah. they approached me, but um, being part of the, the local Etsy seller group, um, I just become like a leader. Like there's a whole structure for Etsy teams, um, but my friend and I were like co-leading that. And so uh, they must've seen like, if, if these people are kind of like leading groups in their area, maybe they'd want to, you know, do something and, and lead an event in their area. So I think maybe that was it, but I can't really say exactly how that happened, but they made a good it was choice. cool. Yeah. yeah, like it was great. I had no idea I would like event planning, never considered it before. So, so what's been your favorite event so far that you've planned? 
They're all different. I can't compare them. You've done a lot of different events. Yes, lots. And I like them all for different reasons. Okay. Um, so give us give us some examples of a couple that, so, that, you, were, that you really liked or that why you yeah. like them. So I really like um, working with economic development on yep. networking events because, um, like you guys, being a small business owner, um, sometimes it can be a little isolating. There aren't too many mm -hmm. people out there who kind of understand what we're going through. Mm -hmm. So I really like networking events because it brings us all together. Yep. We can share tips and tricks, share like maybe our struggles that we're going through. So I really like not only just with ECDEV, but other networking events. Like you guys are part of the Ultimate Me Day last week, yep. um, which great was event, a different by the way. thing. Yeah, it was, it was great to have you there. Um, it's a different sort of networking, right? So yes. it was all just different businesses, mostly in the service industry showing what we do and providing an experience yeah. for attendees so um but yeah I, I can never choose a favorite of obviously dresden night market you know that's my group of friends we have a really good time with it yeah um so, and that's a whole other energy but i like each event for different reasons yeah so, yeah awesome were you a part of the rm event in the, yes yeah yeah so um that was huge that was last yeah. summer it was massive um i was involved with the activities happening at rm so okay. um part of that part of the ask was to have sort of an art kind of like a like an etsy event kind of in uh, on the premises um and there was actually an event happening at the same time on the same day so i asked them to be a part of it mm -hmm. so that was a great partnership because i wouldn't have wanted to compete two si similar events happening at the same time and it was great that you could have them both at yeah RM, right? yeah so it was great could... so i was really thankful that the organizers of that event wanted to partner yeah um, and that was a great experience too it was yeah. awesome yeah that was a great weekend so yeah. I, I know you said that etsy was kind of your first start but like mm -hmm. were you a natural planner before, like amongst your friends, were you the type of person to get everyone together? Were you that kind of person? Looking back, I think I was. Yeah. Um, in high school, do you remember Sears Drama Festival? Were you in high no, school? No, to be honest. So um, that was where like drama clubs from every high school would compete. They'd cool. like practice a play, like a one act play, um, and then compete regionally. So like in Chatham Kent, and then you'd go on to compete provincially. Um, so I was the director of one of our plays and I took it like really far. I was really into it and our school had never gone to regionals um, except for when I directed one of the plays, which I'm super proud of still. Yeah. That was like 15 years ago, yeah, but awesome. it, it was great. So I think I've always been sort of like a leader in that way. Sounds I don't like necessarily it. know if I was a planner back then, but I've always been some sort of a leader and like yeah. I can get people together and achieve something. So yeah, yeah. Cool. it's been fun. Cool. And so before the planning, uh, you worked at the radio. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which, which radio station was that? So CKXS 99.1 nice. in Wallaceburg. Nice and local. Yeah, it was great. Um, great, great group of people that worked yep. there. We had a lot of fun with it. I was um, in the newsroom. So okay, cool. um, people would have seen me at like council meetings. I did, I was at three years of, of council, like every, almost every Monday, every other Monday. Um, and did then you like, ever fall asleep? No, never. I'm super into like local politics, provincial Same. politics. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And especially once you like follow it for a little bit and then you can kind of like, uh, maybe not guess what's going to happen, but you're interested to see how it goes. You kind of get the characteristics on each counselor. Yeah, you like, yeah. Oh, I know how so and so's. Yeah, it's yeah. like kind of like a reality show. It's like if you cool. really yeah. follow it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. So, I want to pick your brain on this because Quinton and I are always trying to get organized. Okay. Like as a small business, we're trying to build new systems, new mm -hmm. processes all the time. You seem like an organization master, just Thanks. based on <laughs> how your events go. So, like yeah. for us or for the people listening or watching. Do you have any tips on like systems, tools that you use, like major game changers for how you plan or stay ahead of the curve? Right. I think, I think a lot of people are expecting me to talk about tech and like using online tools. I'm really kind of old school in a way. So I still have like a paper planner. Okay. Um, I know I, like I get Google, um, like calendar things all the time mm -hmm. and you know, those, those chime on my phone all the time. Okay. I have a, an appointment that day. Um, but I like writing things down. Um, and I do keep a lot in my head, which is maybe not so good oh, all that's the time. Dangerous. Yes. So I have to write it down. <laughs> I write it down. Um, I really like Google's tools. So like I use Google forms for applications. Um, and it, it's great because it, it just like, it syncs well with like Gmail and all the, all the yeah. Google kind of things. So, sure. um, yeah, I, I would say like writing things down is like my main way of keeping organized. Um, uh, and maybe part of it's just like how my head works. I yeah. don't know. But yeah. yeah, sometimes like tech's great, but sometimes yeah. you're going back to. We're, we're kind ways. of old school in that sense too, though. Our, mm. our weekly meetings, we write down our goals for the week and what we want to get done nice. in that week on a whiteboard. We love mm -hmm. our whiteboards. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, we've been trying to use this system called Trello and it's like okay. a project management software. Anyway, we're trying to get into that. But yes, we still, every single week, we physically write. Like, we're definitely oh, writers. Well, that's for good. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We like to write things out and like see them. 
like mm. on physical. Maybe you're just wired to be a good planner. Maybe, Maybe. yeah. If I think of any other tips, I'll let you know, though. Like color coding, but, like anything like okay, that? Okay, here's another thing. Yes, color coding. So I've completely forgot about it, but I love using multiple colors of pens. Yeah. So I have okay. lots. Um, and I like to... Maybe not, like, I don't use just green for certain things, but when I'm writing things out, I like to, if I'm changing thoughts, because I, I like to write during meetings, like, exactly what's happening right. and stuff. Okay. If I'm changing thoughts, I change color. Um, oh, wow. And it, I don't know if that's something that works for me, that but... Could be a, that could um, be a little nugget, definitely. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, different colors, different thoughts, and I don't really adhere to, like, a color scheme. I just kind of go with whatever feels right. Like, yeah. Yeah, this thought is the color blue. Yeah. Something like yeah. that, so... Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about Chatham Kent. Okay. What do you guys think about that? Let's do it. Cool. Sure, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think of the business community in Chatham Kent? Like, do you think that it's growing? Do you think that? Well, we just saw. I just saw an article that said that Chatham Kent is growing. Feels mm-hmm. like the population. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm waiting longer at stoplights and waiting behind the trains and stuff. So mm-hmm. I guess if that's a an, an indicator. But do you see any any growth? Any change? So I'm leaning towards saying yes that it is growing, but maybe that's because I'm also paying more attention. I'm more involved in the business community, yeah. so there could be a bias that way. Um, but just noticing that there are new businesses cropping up every day. Mm-hmm. I was just meeting with Stephanie Simmons earlier from Sugar That. She's in yep. downtown Chatham. She opened up like a few months ago. Yeah. Um, one of downtown Chatham's newest businesses. And yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more crop up. Um, it's great that we all showcase ourselves. And sometimes we talk about like, what it's like to be in business. And so maybe that inspires more people. Um, yeah, I think it's growing. What yeah. do you guys think? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> There's no stoplight <laughs> thing for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a little indicator of. It's a, it's a small one, but it's, it's something that you notice. And we're super excited. For example, everybody is pumped on Mercado Fresh, the new grocery yes. store. Yes. I don't know if you've been in there. It's, yeah. it's really nice. It's really nice. I've got to check it out. Um, the prices are great. Um, free plug to Mercado Fresh. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's just cool to see that much. Ex- like, I'm not saying it's, it's boring. It's definitely yeah. interesting, but it's cool to see that much excitement about a new business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think social media has really helped with that, right? Because the only reason I had heard about Mercado Fresh as many times as I did is because of their socials. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, they're doing great. That's a good tenant job, to yeah. to keep that that side of town busy. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder what thing. they'll fill the middle with. I'm not sure if they're going so, to. Or... I was wondering that. Like, is there a middle spot that's vacant? Or... Yeah, because okay. when you walk into Mercado Fresh, you're like, okay, it's going to be like a massive grocery store mm-hmm. and not to not to knock it or anything but it, it is it's only one corner right. of the of the entire building really but yeah okay. i do i do wonder what they're going to do with that whole middle part so it doesn't mm-hmm. touch planet fitness no no I don't no, think no. So. they're no. distant neighbors yeah <laughs> yeah so we had a massive target then is what i take from that <laughs> that right? target that target was huge they must have had a lot of like storage space or warehouse space yeah yeah, but, yeah probably the yeah. back side you didn't see yeah mm-hmm. but yeah no there's a lot of new homes being developed populations yeah. going up yeah. um we had a guest last week. Shout out to Ryan Rusnak, a real estate agent. Um, the market is super hot right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. If you uh, couldn't tell, so I think these are all good indicators. That yeah. And I things mean, are moving in the right direction. And he yeah. said that it's not just old people coming here either. Oh, like that's it's good. like his clients are also on the young side. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's good as well because we do we need young families here as well too. So right, yeah, just to yeah. increase like it helps increase like our tax base. So sure. you know, there's more money that can go into the municipality. For sure. Um, why do you think young people are moving to Chatham Kent? Like, is there anything that stands out that you? Think? Well, here's one thing that that we kind of recognize, and I forget who I was talking to the other day, but you don't need to, for example. Our business, technically, we could do it online. We could do it anywhere remotely, whatever mm-hmm. you, whatever you yeah. want to say, and travel to go and do the production side of our business. But the cost of living here is so much cheaper than living in a larger city. And I think people are realizing that if you can work remotely, why not do it where your bills are less? Yeah. Makes and sense, things like yeah. that, right? Like just keeping your cost of living low. Um, I think that could be a reason why young people are living here because a lot of, not a lot of, I'd say a good portion of young people are working online and working digitally and they mm-hmm. can kind of work wherever if they're not in traditional jobs yeah what do you think i mean i think like um i think ryan touched on this last week but like a lot of uh jobs with standardized income like municipal jobs where you're given the opportunity to earn x amount of money here or in a bigger city where Mm -hmm. the dollars go so much farther here Mm -hmm. like it's a cost of living thing so if you're skilled to do a certain position and you can get everything you need in chatham then you're going to be saving a ton of money yeah Mm -hmm. for sure i think that's a big part of it yeah and yeah a lot of people working remotely yeah. Yeah. Did you always live in Chatham Kent? So I grew up here. Um, I moved here maybe when I was like 10, uh, but then I went away to university in Toronto right. um, for six years. And okay. I moved back. So I've kind of been like in and out, um, but I'm really feeling like every day feeling closer to Chatham Kent, right? Like th- just being able to socialize with everyone, um, especially in the business community, it yeah. just feels like home and, and that it's a, a nice place to live. So mm-hmm. yeah. 
Cool. Where did you go to school in Toronto? University of Toronto. Really? So yeah. did I. Oh, did you? What did you go for? I went to UTM. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Got yeah. Some, some... For six years. Well, I I did a fifth year and then I just stayed for an extra year. Nice. But, um... So as somebody who's also experienced the transition of mm-hmm. uh, moving back, I, which I never thought I would, by the way. Neither did I. Neither did I. I always anticipated like starting up a business like Quinton and I or like yours. I, yeah. You'd have to be in a bigger market. Mm-hmm. Turns out there's more than enough business here, which we were pleasantly surprised about. Yeah, and like, and not as much competition. You're always going to see competition, That's another thing. but it's not as much. Yeah. And you can collaborate. It's yeah. easier to collaborate here. So how did you take the transition? Like, how did that feel? So I came back for unfortunate reasons, um, like family reasons. But so I also wasn't prepared to move back. Okay. But I realized the benefits of moving back, right? Like cost, especially now that rent there is insane in Toronto. So um, it was hard though because I was used to things always happening, going on in, in Toronto, and um, the city life kind of inspired me to do more different types of events because I was used to that. And I was really sad that I couldn't, you know, move back to Toronto. Um, But I decided that if I couldn't move back, I would bring some of those elements with me and just do it myself. So I love that. Yeah. Just, you know, if you can't, if you can't have it, make it yourself. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I thought. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. we originally, we started our business in, in Hamilton, like, cause that's well, that in the GTA, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we got our first client here in Chatham Kent, but then we still had a couple of years left of university, both of us. And then it, we got another big client in my last year. Jared was still finishing up, and it was in Chatham. So we we're like, okay, well, I guess this is where we're going to end up. And we we tried so hard to get relationships in Hamilton and stuff like that um, for like, like an entire year. We gave it like a wow. really good shot, but we still only had our one client here in Chatham. So then we got another call in Chatham. We're like, this is where we have to go. So right. Now we're now we're here. Yeah, yeah, I never would have imagined it would work no, that way. I would have thought no, the we thought bigger market, way more right? That's right? that's what you would think, but, but it's actually the opposite. Though about the competition, yeah, so true. Because mm-hmm. we were younger, we were less experienced, less legitimized. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot harder to be taken seriously For three sure. years ago. I For couldn't sure. even imagine trying to compete in GTA. Like, how do you? Where do you even start? Right? Like, I don't. I don't it's know. it's a lot about the people that you know in any in any market. Right. Really, it truly is. Mm-hmm. It truly is. And having nobody up there, I guess maybe that was that was the thing. We didn't really have any real tangible relationships right. up there that we could that mm-hmm. we could work with. And that's something that some people um, don't like about Chatham is word does travel fast, and if you have a reputation, it gets to spread quickly. But you know that can work to your advantage. Yeah, uh, just can, as, yeah. just as much. Yeah, and that's what we found. Like. Um, you can know a ton of people in Chatham, and if you were to know the same amount of people, number for number, in, in Toronto, you'd know a much smaller fraction of them. That's that's a good point. It's yeah, true for sure. Yeah, it's true. It is true. Yeah. So you you've kind of touched on it a couple times, but what are some of the things for the entrepreneurs that are listening and the the small business owners? What are some of the struggles that you come across that you want to talk about that you think that we should all be sharing? Um, it's hard to say. There's a there's a lot a little of little a different bunch. things, yeah. right? Um, so here's one, you guys are full time in this, right? Yep. So being used to like a nine to five, there's structure there. When you're <laughs> a business owner, there's zero structure. You have to create it. So, right. Like getting up in the morning, you're like, do like, okay, I, I can sleep in if I want to, yep. but yeah. then work doesn't get done and you don't make any money. Whereas if you had a nine to five, you, you still have to do your job and get up, but you're that nine, that paycheck is still going to come. Yep. So yeah, like finding, finding a balance between, so I used to work a lot, like a lot. Um, and then I had no time for myself and I would burn out. So then I was like, let's try and socialize more. Um, and then I was like, oh, okay, I'm not working enough now. So trying to find that balance, right. Between like work life. Yes. Balance is, is the main one for me. Um, what about you guys? Do you, have you found that balance? That's, that's a big one with me. We're working on it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think like we try to build systems Mm -hmm. like, um, scheduling things in advance scheduling meetings coming up with like processes to do things yeah. it, it's all on you right and i think like at the end of the day if something doesn't go the way you want there's no one else you can blame mm-hmm. so like, you, have, you have to take all responsibility for whatever yeah. happens and, and it's a good and a bad thing yeah mm-hmm. it's a good and a bad yeah. thing. it's liberating right. yeah but like you have to you know cut the bs like it's yeah right you know the thing the thing with me is that if i was given the opportunity to to just work all the time and like i wouldn't burn out and like my wife would be okay with it mm-hmm. i would just work forever um, like, like there's a couple nights a week where I, I, I'm in here at like nine o'clock in the morning and I don't leave until like 10 o'clock at night. Wow. And like, that's, but I'm still trying to balance that out. Like, yeah. I, cause obviously you can't be doing that every single day. So I, I I've allowed myself Definitely. one, one late night a week. Okay. So that, that's we're, we're testing that out. Yeah. I, I, it's still, yeah, but it's, it's always a constant challenge trying to balance out. Yeah. Everything. Mm-hmm. It's nice being able to choose your own hours. 
for sure because yeah. like if you have an appointment in the middle of the day that's something just, that's something mm. you can go and do but then again if you're if you're b2b you're working with other businesses a lot of the businesses you work with are nine to five right so you kind of have to cater your time around theirs anyway yeah so that kind of just ends yeah. up working out that, yeah 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 but yeah, yeah, it's like freedom and responsibility pretty much is what it comes down to. And I, mm. Yeah, structure. And I think that that's so true. Like we're still trying to develop our structure and stuff like that. Definitely. And yes, we have, we have like, for example, we have business hours for our office here, mm -hmm. but maybe we're not in the office from nine to like, it's, it's all, yeah. Just trying to figure everything out for sure. Time, yeah. Time management. Yeah. Maybe in the future we'd have like a front desk, somebody to. Yeah. Like what Soar has, for example. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really helpful. Like some days I wish I just had like a permanent assistant. <laughs> you know, you, just like twenty four seven. A lot of people talk about virtual assistants. Yeah, you mentioned you, that to me. Do you have a virtual? Like, have you? I, like, I want to look into the it. The first time I heard about it was from you, okay. so I, and okay. I haven't looked into it, but it sounds awesome. Like, and I don't know how it works. Like, do you know how that? I don't know exactly how it works, okay. but I think that like a lot of people, they just go on Fiverr and they find mm -hmm. these yeah. virtual assistants, right. and they're X amount per month. But the thing is, I think I'm still like, I don't know if I could justify that. You know. Yeah. Like, I think I can still handle it. So I don't, I, I go all the way until I can't go anymore. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I wonder how that would work. Like, do they have access to your emails? And I think like, so. And then I think like just... your inbox and your calendar. Yeah. I think that's, that would be the thing that I would okay. hand off. Yeah. I think it depends yeah. relationship to relationship. Like you can find mm -hmm. someone to fit into your system or your structure. Yeah. However you want. Yeah. 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 I don't know. That's something that, that Quinn and I are talking about more and more is like letting go of some of our mm -hmm. control and learning to hand it off to other people yeah. and learning to be able to delegate responsibility. Yep. Um, but, but, but it's hard though, because you work hard to establish yourself and create like a certain kind of perception of your brand and your business. And yeah. When you go to pass the torch to someone, like it, it's a big thing. That is, that's huge. I struggle with that all the time. Sure. Like, and I do, I am getting better at it. And when I, I delegate or if I ask for help, asking for help is huge yeah. too and, and difficult, but, yeah. um, yeah, it, it does help out in the end, but sometimes I just feel like I'm I'm too much of a control freak and I have too much of that just like, oh, I'll just do it myself kind of thing. And yeah. not, I, sometimes I just don't want to bother people. Yeah. But, it's, yeah. it's just such an important step, though, to, to step back and stop working in your business and work on it. Yes. Like if yeah. you really want to like scale it. And so like... What are, what, where do you see 519 events and promotion? Like, where do you want to take it to? Like, do you want to have a team of employees? Do you want to just kind of do this on your own? Like, what, what do you, what do you want to do? I have no idea. So right now I'm taking it almost day by day. Okay. Um, I, I got too caught up in like, okay, what am I doing five years from now, 10 years from now? And I think a lot of people tell you it's good to have a plan. And yeah. I don't disagree with that. I think you <laughs> absolutely should have a plan. Uh, but the way I work is I'm better just working on like, project by project and things just grow naturally um and you can kind of take opportunities or leave them where you want i have no idea what even like next year looks like yep. um, but I, I do know that i really like event planning i love the flexibility of, of being my own boss um I, I just don't know if the opportunity came where i would have like an office space and employees then maybe i'd look into that but mm -hmm. i just i just don't know yeah we don't plan for longer than a year out okay really because yeah. realistically you cannot gauge you can't like too much is up in the air right yeah. like so. Yep, and I think it's unreal. Like the people that say a ten-year plan, a five-year plan, get out of here. Right? Like you, you know? don't know if you're even going to be doing this in you five know? or yeah. ten years. Yeah, so. totally. Yeah, and maybe nice to have a vague idea, but yeah, it's like yeah. so much could Gen change. General like, direction, but other than yeah. that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know. It's like they say, like working on your business—that's what separates a business from a small business. But like, not everybody wants to to run a multi-employee nope. business. Like yeah. some people get a lot of pleasure out of running the whole show themselves yeah mm -hmm. yep. yeah so like i think you know not one is more successful than the other it's just whatever makes you the happiest really yeah, yeah. i think that's great advice do what makes you happy right yeah so i want to talk i want to jump back a little bit and talk a little bit about the ultimate me day event okay that was a lot of Let's fun and i want to i want to say that i thought it was really cool because it was a networking event but it was also experiential mm -hmm. so it wasn't just a bunch of people after hours like business after hours saying oh, hey, you know, like, let's all walk around and, like, mingle. There was experiences. So, for example, I got cupping done. I don't know if you can see the thing, but I got cupped on my, yep. like, the... Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. Is that the technical term for it? I think so. I think so. I heard anyway, people saying cupping, so... So, I got it all over here, and then uh, we were doing headshots, and there was a couple other businesses, like, there was the Comfortable Dwelling. Yep. They were doing an interior design mm -hmm. seminar. Like, super cool, experiential yeah. networking. So, that was, that was awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you guys liked it and that yeah. you were part of it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, a, fun. It was a fun night. Yeah. I just wish that I got to participate in some of the experiences, sure. but we could just do it again. Yeah. Um, for that Ultimate Bean Day, I can't take the credit for it, for the, the concept. 
Um, it was done in 2013, I believe, by another group. But oh, we asked no them, way. yeah, we asked them for permission. We're like, hey, can we just bring this back just for a little bit? Because we yeah. wanted to animate Sora in there. And then I was working with Maureen Geddes and Sharon Campbell Raymond on it. And they were like, yeah, that sounds cool. Um, so we just brought it back um, just for one day. I don't know if it was multiple days before, but yeah, it, it's just different. It's a different form of networking. We did invite the public to buy tickets and come to it, yeah. but there's a lot of local businesses that were featured and just yeah. offering experiences like henna tattoos or yes. body sugaring. Yes. Um, I think there was um, balancing chakras, like with a tuning fork. Yeah. I saw there was a huge lineup for that. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of, kind of a different idea and different yeah. approach. There was good food. I snuck out for some snacks. Yeah. Chili, the yeah, vegan, yeah. Was it yeah. vegan chili or it was vegetarian? Vegan. Yeah, it was yeah. good. And was I think good. it was cool that mm. there was uh, not only business owners and general yeah. public. I thought it was a good mix because, like Quentin said, we had a, like a headshot studio. We were doing mm -hmm. professional photos. And all sorts of people were coming in through our door to get their photo taken. And we're B2B, so right. it's more beneficial to our business to have business owners come in and get to network with them. But... For the businesses that are selling direct to consumer, you want those consumers there to come test your stuff, come yeah. check it out. So yeah. I, I think everybody kind of mm -hmm. kind of gained from the demographic there. Yeah, yeah, it's good for awareness too, right? Mm -hmm. Because then if they see your logo, like yeah. if you're sponsoring something, exactly. they're like, oh, I know who they are. And yeah. it's, it's good for like your image. And so yeah. I think there are a lot of benefits for everybody. At the end of the day, it's all people, right? Yeah, all, yeah, you're right. It all contributes yeah. in some way. Do you see yourself doing more networking events similar style? Um, I think so. I really liked it. So we do have something coming up on May 21st. We're working on the concept. Okay. Um, it'll be similar in style, same organizing team, me, Maureen and Sharon. Um, but details will be coming soon, Okay. but it's going to be similar. Um, any, any podcast exclusive details that you can drop? So we're maybe, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll give you one. So we're thinking about combining the event that we did before that one. It was called inspiring women. It was like a, well, a women's event. We had a hundred people in SOAR. Um, and four yeah. different speakers. We want to combine that style with the Ultimate Me Day style. Just not sure exactly how that looks yet, but it'll be like a hybrid. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Looking Stay forward tuned to for that. more then, yeah. yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yep. That's awesome. So you did work out of SOAR at one point too. Mm -hmm. So what, how, how was that? Did you enjoy it? I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. SOAR is new. So for anyone who doesn't know, it's on King Street yep. in downtown Shout Chatham. Shout out to SOAR. Yeah. Um, it's got like big windows. It's just something you almost don't feel like you're in Chatham at that point. It feels like a like a city co-working space. Yeah. Um, so when I'm really busy, like when my markets are happening, like Dresden Night Market, Etsy events happening all at the same time, um, that for me that was like July, August, September area. It's good for me to be in downtown Chatham, right? It's just like the central home base core. Yeah. So I was renting space there for those months, and it was great. Like that's where I met Sharon. Yep. Um, Maureen was actually a former teacher of mine, mm. so I'd already known her. But then no, I ran no. into her there. It's really great for forming business relationships, yeah. and then if you have a cool idea and there's like-minded people there, you can you can make it happen. So yeah. It was really cool. So what did you do before? So what did the you radio? do before the radio? Good question. So we talked about my University of Toronto experience, yeah. yep. moved back. Then I was like, well, what am I going to do now? My education was in English and environmental biology. Not really a ton of things you can do with that. Um, I guess you could get creative. But uh, I was like, well, maybe I'll get more education. So being from Ridgetown, I saw that the University of Guelph Ridgetown campus was there. I applied for environmental management, got into that program, really enjoyed it. So I actually was trained in water and wastewater treatment. Oh, wow. So got my cert certification in that, did yep. my co-op, and then um, it's hard to find a job in that too. So I was like, okay, I'm at the same time I was planning events. So like I have two different directions. I can move again and find a job in the field that I went to school for, or I could take my event planning and kind of make some money off it. Um, turn into a business, so I chose the event planning route cool. clearly. Um, but that's what I was doing before radio. Radio kind of came in after I was done uh, my schooling the second time in Ridgetown. Um, there was a news job that opened up, and then I was like, well, I, I know how to talk and read, and yeah. and you know, like um, I, I'm kind of curious, so I think that'd be good for journalism. But it, it was a really, it was a really fun job. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. So, living in Toronto, what events mm -hmm. or like festivals or anything do you take inspiration from? Because there's so many great ones. There are lots, yeah. So, um, Carabana, so that's a huge one that yep. happens down on the lake shore. Um, the Pride Parade, which is awesome. Like, so I actually accidentally uh, walked into it one time and I was like, <laughs> I didn't even know what was happening. Um, but it was such a, it was just a, such a fun event, like good vibes, great atmosphere. Anything happening in Young and Dundas Square, they have something almost every day, I every would day. think, yeah. right? So just, because um, I spent a lot of time down 
downtown. I went to the downtown campus, St. Right. George. Um, but being Great downtown, campus, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like Hogwarts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just any events that are happening. There was okay, so there was this one event happening in Queens Park. It was called Wish Come True. I don't know if it's a thing anymore. Maybe it only happened once. But they had these giant balloons in in the park, yeah. um, and just like cool art demonstrations, and it was just very hands on. I think it was for kids, but I stumbled upon that, and I was like, this is awesome. Um, and they had a taste of Toronto, I think it was called. And it was a, a bunch of different restaurants in the park in Queens Park. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, and you just get, you buy like tokens, I think, and then you redeem them for samples of food. And, and then uh, the film festival, I actually volunteered with the film festival for a bit. Oh, wow. So I had an event experience like back the best then. in the world now. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was big. So I was doing that in 2009, I think, and um, it was big then, and it's getting bigger every year, I That's think. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, even U of T has so much going on just within the school. Yeah, like, yeah. The restaurant idea, I think that would be so cool if somebody were to bring like a winter delicious to yeah. Chatham or something mm-hmm. like that and if you don't know that's like a festival where you sign up in advance and you get to do like a like a pub crawl but with restaurants instead and you get to try a bunch of different stuff in one day I think that'd be something really cool that it's we could cool. do yeah. here locally yeah yeah do you have any like events that, that you're thinking well I guess you don't really want to drop them you like you don't want to say them yeah but like oh, there's just so many things that you could do there are lots, right? And yeah. I do have some ideas, but they're not really, they're nothing that I'm actually actively okay. pursuing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like something like a food event. Um, London has something that's similar to Winterlicious, but they have like a set menu right. and it's like a set price. I think they all have the same price, but okay. the, but you can go to it anytime during whatever season it is and yeah. then order off that menu and it's already pre-selected and everything. And sweet. It's so there's sweet. something like that. So you right? can have this one if you want. Okay. Um, <laughs> a pizza festival. Oh, I want to bring it up. Oh. a pizza festival. Can you tell us if this like would work or if this is just bananas? Because this is Quentin's idea. Okay, I think it's pretty pitch awesome. your idea. We have so many pizza places in yep. Chatham, Kent. We apparently made the Hawaiian pizza what oh, it is. That's true. Bring let's, them all to store. Let's bring them all, bring to, them all yeah. into wherever. <laughs> let's see who makes the best pie. We have some celebrity judges, mm. and we finally settle the beef. Who makes the best pie in Chatham, Kent? Do you want to do it? I think Let's we should just do, do it. it. <laughs> we should do it. That would, we'll get there, everybody. There could be some big drama. And we're going to need a big venue, I think. <laughs> Huge venue. Yeah. Huge venue. Mm-hmm. My okay. little joke I always say is like, big pizza runs chat. <laughs> <laughs> big pizza. <laughs> think the, about the, it. The big three. There, yeah. There's so many pizza spots. There are. And Chatham must love their pizza. Because yeah. if a new pizza place is going to come here, <laughs> they're like, okay, there's a market for me. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's something. Maybe Chatham becomes, or Chatham Kent becomes the pizza capital of Canada. Because we started this event? Yeah, yeah. We cannot be far off. I don't know. I don't think so. We can't. There's Let's so many pizza poll. spots. <laughs> We're impartial to our client, Steve's Pizza. We are. Yeah. We are impartial. Shout out to you, Steve. Shout out to Steve. You're the best. <laughs> yeah, there's just so many pizza spots. Like, even pizza spots that you don't think are pizza spots. For example, the Hawaiian pizza was created at Satellite. Yes, yeah. Not even a... Who, like, not, not to be rude, but I don't think of them when I think of pizza right off mm. the get, right? But they've created the Hawaiian pizza. So, anyway, Good you point. can have it if you want it. Okay. I would love to be a part of it in some way. I think that the Let's pizza festival should Let be Let us a judge, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. 2021. 2021. Pizza festival. Let's do it. Okay. Podcast exclusive. You hear that? Big pizza? <laughs> 2021. Get your recipes ready. <laughs> so what else, what else do you guys want to jam about? Um, well, one thing that we like to do is our tip of the week segment right. where we ask our guests to give some kind of advice to the people listening and – you can interpret it however you want. If you want it to be event planning related okay. advice, uh, general entrepreneurship, starting out, or just anything you think people could, could benefit from. Okay. So you actually, um, you told me, you prepped me ahead of time. So I thought about my tip the whole time we were yeah, talking. Yeah, she did okay. get a little so warning. It's, and it's productivity related. Mm. So, um, so for those of us who are either workaholics or are trying to get to be more productive, I think it applies to everyone. So when you're working on something, let's say you've already like gone over, gotten over the hump of like trying to get productive. You're already working on something. Um, try doing one more thing. So you're feeling like you're done. You're like, oh no, I'm done. Try and do one more thing because you want to take advantage of you and your energy at that yeah. time and your mm-hmm. motivation. Do one more thing. So whether it's, whether it's even you're doing chores around the house, you know, you vacuumed, you've maybe mopped and put the dishes away. Do one more while you're energized. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So, and cool. I, I adopted that into my daily life and it's really helped me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So. That's cool. a good point. That would be my tip. All right. I, I always, I can relate to that when I'm, if I'm like editing a document or mm-hmm. doing writing for me, when I start editing something, it takes me like 20 minutes just to get into the flow of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I always think like I could do an extra 20 minutes now when I'm in, in the swing of things mm-hmm. and have it be a solid 20 minutes or I could wait till tomorrow 
open up the document and just stare at it and kind of you have to regroup mm-hmm. and get everything going maybe video editing similar yeah you like, have to get in the flow if you're doing yeah. any creative yeah. thing there is a flow state that you have to try and get into like you can't just kind of like oh, okay i'm gonna jump like you kind of gotta i don't know it's yeah it's weird. just how we work i guess how humans it's work weird. You, yeah you have to it's get weird into but it. when you're in that flow state definitely ride it out yeah. that, that's a yeah. great tip yeah that's a great tip just, just push yourself to do one more thing. Yeah, so. awesome. And that's something mm-hmm. that can apply to anybody listening. If you're a yeah, student, if you're anything. a small yeah. business, yeah. an employee, anything. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody. Sweet. Thank you all for tuning in to episode four of the Exordi Creative Podcast. Thank you to Marina McDonald for coming in. Great to have you, Great. Marina. And thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Till next time. Peace.